to another video. Today we're going to be building an archery box target. So we have all of our supplies here. I got my dad helping me and we'll show you how it's done step by step. Hope you enjoy. So today we are going to be building a box target. So we have this 3x3 three three DIY box target skin. So we have the instructions and a little bit about it. We have four pieces pre-cut. There's two more right there. And we'll show you how it's done. So we have most of our supplies here. We have screws. We have black plastic sheeting to go behind the target so when it's shot you don't see all the fabric and plastic that's going to be put in the target. We've got our drill and our bits and our target. And then these two pieces of wood are 32, 33 inches and these two are 36 inches. These two pieces of wood. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pre-drill four holes on each end of the board with number 10 three and a half inch deck screws. So we're going to do that right now and we'll show you. So we roughly marked our wood. We put four holes and we off-centered them each a little. And we're going to drill straight down with our drill bit. So using our bigger drill bit, we just barely went into the top of each of the holes to create a little spot for the top of the screw to sit in. Okay, so we're going to drill our first four screws in. We're going to drill the two outside ones and then we zoom in. So we put our third board on the side, leveled it up, put our four holes back on the top, and we're going to repeat the same steps again. So one thing we were uh, for sure to take into account was the spacing between the edge of the board on each side and the first screw so that when an arrow hits it, there's um, not as high of a chance that the arrow will hit the screw if it's farther back. So we left about a two to three inch gap on each side.
So we have our four screws pre-ready to drill in, but we're only going to do the two outside ones so that when we do the other side, if it needs to be adjusted, we can have a little bit of wiggle room to adjust it. So now that we have our four corners in, we're going to do our four inside screws. So we need to cut a trap door in the top of this so that if the stuffing gets weak, we can stuff more in. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up um, this on the edge and create two straight lines on each side so that we can create our box to cut. So now for the other two sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them along here like we did on the other side and just mark it a little so that we know where those edges are and then move it over and line it up on the edges. And then you can create your straight line again. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. The next step um, is to cut the top off. So what I'm going to do is we're going to drill four holes on the side on a bit of an angle and then my dad's going to come in with his saw and cut out the whole rectangle but he's going to leave it on a bit of an angle so that when the lid goes on it doesn't fall through and it still sits there kind of like you do with a pumpkin Okay, so we've cut out our piece of wood and it comes out and it's on a slant. So it will stay in there perfectly. So we have finished cutting all four sides and it now comes out and it's on an angle um, so that when we put it in, it doesn't fall all the way through. So what we did is we laid down the target and then we measured out this black piece of plastic and we cut it to fit the size and then we stapled it all around the edge just on the one side so far and now we're going to put the target on top. So why we put this on top of the box before we put the target on is that so there's another layer um, between the target and the pieces of plastic we're going to put inside so that none of the other colors show through because we're going to put different colored pieces of plastic and fabric on the inside. So we have stapled around all four sides. So now we're going to repeat the same process on the other side with the other sheet of target. So we have this old tarp and we cut all the metal rings off such as this one, so that we don't have our arrows hitting any metal that will be in our target. We cut them off all the way around, so we're using this spare tarp 
that's kind of gold to put inside a target. So here's some of our plastic we've already put in and we got a bunch more to put inside and then we'll cover it up. So as you saw, we used some of this plastic sheeting to stuff our target with before we put the last piece on, just so that it's easier and we don't have to squish it all through this little hole in the top. This is what me and Dad work with. Can you pause for one sec? I need to film. So we have our black plastic sheeting underneath, and then we're going to do the same thing as we did on the other side by stapling the white skin down.
so we have stuffed our target full of plastic. It's pretty packed in so that the arrow does not go through. It's pretty compact. Yeah. So we're back here um, again today and we're going to complete the last couple steps of our target. Take a measure off 33 inches. Here's the two. So the piece we just measured out was from the bottom to the other side of the bottom and the top to the other side of the top, which was 33 inches. And then we will measure our side pieces and cut those as well. So we decided to spray paint all of our edge pieces black after they are pre-drilled. So my dad's just doing that now. So while our painted pieces of wood are drying, we have cut the other four pieces for the other side and are marking them out and going to pre-drill them just like we did the other side. So we're drilling in all of the screws now. We're starting with the two ends and then we'll do all the middle pieces. So we have finished all four sides and now we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. So this is our completed side and then we're still working on this side. We still have some screws to put in but our drill battery died so we took a break. So we're going to finish screwing these ones in and the bottom and then we're going to put some straps on the side to carry it and then we'll be done so we're just gonna staple this in the top of our lid just so we have it for future reference so we're just burning the ends of a strap we just cut so that we can use it as a handle for the top of our lid and we've done the same for our two side handles. That just seals off the ends and it doesn't fray anymore. So we're prepping our handles 
by putting the screw through them so that it comes out on the other side of the fabric and then we can screw it into the holes that we marked in the middle of our lid. So we measured how high we wanted our handles to be on the side, which we decided on 22 inches high. And we're going to do basically the same thing we did with the lid handle, but just on the sides. So that um, there's an easy way to carry it around in the backyard or when we're lifting it. So here we have our final product. Um, my dad and I are going to do a couple more things. Um, obviously there's the lid can come right off. So we're going to put a couple clamps on each side. Um, we're going to add a little bit more packing. Obviously it stops the, the arrows from going through, but we would just like to pack the top a bit more just in case we get some shots at the top. Um, we are going to finish it either with paint or stain on the white wood here. If you were going to store this outside, I suggest you put um, an outdoor stain or paint on it just to prolong the life and cover it with a tarp if you're gonna keep it outside. And also we put plastic in our solely. Some people put fabric, but that can cause molding. So we like to put plastic in ours just to prevent that, even though we will keep it out of the rain for the most part. Um, but that's a suggestion if you guys don't have room to store it inside your garage or in a barn um, to help prolong the life of your target. This target is quite heavy. It's very sturdy. We didn't need any support system. It took two people to carry it out here. We did put handles on the side for easy carrying. But you could put wheels or another way to move your target. Um, if you're doing it solely by yourself, it would be too heavy to carry yourself. Um, but other than that, it's a great target uh, for archery um, and it's easy to build. In case you guys wanted to make your own target just like us and get the same skins as we did, we got them from Third Hand Archery. We saw them at a Hunter's Outdoor Show, but you can also go on to their website at thirdhandarchery.com. One thing I love about these skins is that if you shoot out all the center pieces, with two inches of just like a gap in the fabric, they will send you a new skin for free for both sides of your targets. So there's a lifetime warranty on these skins. You can email it to thirdhandinc at twc.com and they will send you your new skin. Another thing I love about this skin is how easy it is to take out your arrows. You really just have to Give it a good shove and it comes right out. Super easy. Where some are not as easy to take it out. So that's what I love about these. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was very fun making this target and it will be used for years. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions on what we could do to our target to improve it, please leave it down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.